Hey everyone, my name is Armin. I'm a partner engineer here at Hex. And today I'd like to walk you through a project where I'll be leveraging Cortex ML functions inside of a Hex project to quickly forecast the population growth in various different countries. And all it will take is a few lines of SQL. So I've gone ahead and grabbed this data from the Census Bureau, and it's actually in the form of a CSV that I've grabbed from online. I just quickly dragged and dropped this into a Hex project, and I can query it as if it was a SQL table with just a raw SQL query. And I'll go ahead and run this and call the output of this raw, mainly because it's not the cleanest data set. We have a lot of uh, null values. There's rows that don't really make sense. So next, I'll clean that data up with a Python cell. We can run that. <clears throat> and as I was scanning this data, I noticed that the most valuable features or columns that actually have values that will help with a model uh, perform best start from around the year 2011. So I'll simplify the data set uh, to forecast past that. All right, great. Next, I'll do a final null check here, and I'll drop all the columns that have tons of null values in them. Do that right here. And lastly, for some of the interesting columns that I did want to keep around but had some null values, I'll fill those in with just in their average value. Finally, I have a clean data set that I've called US population filled mean. And just scanning through this, it looks to be pretty good. Let's scroll over. Looks like we have some of these averages filled in. And one thing to highlight here is this data set actually provides us forecasted values for the different features that we will like to give the model. So when we call inference on this, we can actually use this same data set and we'll see how we split that out. Finally, with this clean data, I do want to write it back to Snowflake since it's in a state that is useful. Maybe others want to get value out of it. So I'll use Hex's neat write back cell right here. And I'll just ensure to define my connection, database schema, and I'll call this USA population. All right, good to go so far. And I'll query this data just to see how we can actually grab it from Snowflake and the right back cell was successful. In this particular case, I'm going to actually be bringing in the year as a no time, no time zone column, or rather data type, because this is a requirement for the forecast function to work appropriately. And I'll make sure to just to exclude the actual year column since we're just calling this year NTZ. And we'll see how quick and easy it is to actually do some forecasting. So to actually do this, I'll be leveraging, again, the Snowflake Cortex uh, forecast function, where all I need to do is just to find a few input data, timestamp column, and target column names. So here I'm using a neat trick uh, that I like to do called a system query reference, or rather a function. And what this is really saying to Snowflake is, hey, Go take this query at time of execution and grab that result set and feed it into as my input data. This avoids me having to create views or tables uh, because I really want to iterate quickly and see if this forecasting is actually of interest for me. I'll make sure to ensure the timestamp column is the year timestamp specific with no time zone and the target column naturally will be population. Once I've run this, that particular function is going to be, or that model is going to be saved and I can call it using the call function here. I'll do a similar trick here with the query reference, except this time, my timestamp column will look to predict out to 25 years ahead, so 2029. So I'll look to break a prediction for 2024 all the way up to 2023, not including it. And I'll make sure to just find my timestamp column. What I get back in hex is a pandas data frame with a timestamp, forecast, and lower and upper bounds. I'll make sure to do some data cleanup again and concatenation so I have historic and feature tables. And here we can see, we can visualize this really quickly. And I do have my forecasted going out and you can see what would be expected an upward trend for the United States population. Now, one thing I wanted to highlight here is this is a little bit of a basic example. What if I had multiple countries in, single, in a singular data set that I want to do forecasting on, right? That's more typical of what we would encounter in real life data sets. So, the Cortex ML functions actually make this really simple. I've gone ahead this time and already written back a data set inside of my Snowflake instance. So I'm gonna call it, and I've called this world data population with a few countries. I'll do the similar trick with the query reference where I'll be using this query when I go ahead and do the model training. And this is where the magic happens. All I really needed to add was just this series column name here, and I've defined it as name. And this name is a column here that contains the various different countries within this particular data set. And what's neat about this is it's actually going to partition it, quote unquote, partition it under the hood for me. 
So we'll create many different models. So I don't have to be manually creating all those models or doing some more of the fancier kind of advanced uh, techniques around partitioning or doing parallel execution for your model training. All I had to do was again, write eight lines of SQL. I'll define again my timestamp, target column, and the input data. I'm good to go at this point. <clears throat> I'll call this again using that system query reference. I've gone ahead and, and created an inference data set where that provides me future values for all of my feature columns. When we run that, we see this time we actually have a series come back. So this is showing me the different country names. The timestamp forecast, lower and upper bounds, as we would expect. I'll do a similar thing where I can go ahead and bring in the historic and future values for this. I'll make sure to uh, forecast out to the same time as well. Grab that amount of data. And we can see here, again, we have the forecasted values in the dotted lines and the historic values in the solid ones. With just, just a few lines of SQL, I was actually able to start leveraging machine learning, even though I'm not maybe super proficient in machine learning best practices or Python work, right? As a SQL user, I can still get the value out of uh, the machine learning benefits of today's world um, with just a few lines of code using native SQL cells. And finally, I can do further analysis if I would want, all in an effort to create my final app, which I can do in Hexus App Builder. Here we can see what an example app looks like. I'm showcasing the density uh, and total area analysis, looking at immigration and birth rates to see how this changes over time and averages, finding some data nuggets that could help in my exploration. Once I'm happy with these changes, I can go ahead and publish this. I can give it a name. Let's just say uh, B2. All my checks have passed and I'm ready to publish my app. Go ahead and click this. Can open in a new tab. And very easily, I can actually share this out to anyone I want. Just go ahead and make sure to toggle on app only. And there we have it. We've just quickly created a machine learning forecast using only SQL. If you'd like to try this project out for yourself, I'll leave a copy in the description below. Thanks for watching.